How's it going everyone? David from DOD Media. Today we're having a look at Photoshop's Content Aware Fill and comparing it to the new Generative Fill and seeing whether the Content Aware Fill is essentially an obsolete tool, which it is. Let me show you what I mean. Jumping into Photoshop here. If I were to say want to remove myself in my douchey pose from this photo, I would typically take my lasso tool, just do a free list, blah, free lasso all the way around, including my shadow. And then I would come up to shift backspace or edit fill and choose content to wear fill and hit okay. And Photoshop would do its magic and then do something like this, which you know just looks terrible because it's basing its content awareness on its surrounding content, right? So the surrounding pixels in the image, it'll use that to try and create something new. And it never quite worked as well as one would hope it did. 10 years ago, it was magic, but now it's just a bit naff. However, if I undo that, but I keep my selection the same and I come to generative fill, I'm not even gonna type anything. I'm just gonna hit generate and see what it will generate for me. It can take a little bit of time though. Ah, look, let's put a little red chair in there. That's lovely. In fact, it's only giving me options with a chair, but I mean, look at that. That's phenomenal. That's a really clean cutout of that wall. And there's that strip where there was a desk leaned against the wall, which didn't ever get painted white. And it's just, it's just blended it beautifully. It's even added a nice shadow in there. So now, okay, I wanna get rid of that chair, let's say. Um, let's be more specific this time. Remove chair. I'm sure this will get faster as it, oh my goodness, done. Look at that. Let's just go ahead and blend these into one layer. So just like that, it has flawlessly, and I mean flawlessly. You can see actually there's a slight, okay, there's slightly less detail in the paint, but there's certainly more than content aware Phil would have put in. It's just spectacular. Okay, next up, uh, let's use this example. Um, let's try and remove that car. So when it comes to dealing with structures and architecture and lines and leading lines, um, again, content aware fill really struggles. So let's highlight that. Let's do our shift backspace, content aware fill. Okay, that's pretty terrible. That's really, really rather bad. Look at that. It's taken part of her jumper, part of the umbrella. It's completely moshed these blurry bokeh pixels into nothingness. It's, it's basically unusable, right? Uh, let's go ahead and undo that and instead do a generative fill. I mean, there you go. It's respected the lines of the building. It's respected the lines of the pavement. It's respect to the lines of the building behind it and even the out of focus brickwork. It's really done a fantastic job. And what I love about the generative fill is it doesn't just do one generation, right? It doesn't just generate one option. It'll generate multiple options. So that, I mean, that's kind of bending in there. It could be a very old building, I guess. But that looks pretty great. You've got a bollard there. And if you had never seen this photo before, you would never know that something had been removed from there in a way that sometimes you can kind of tell when it's been content aware filled and you haven't spent two hours, you know, with the stamp tool trying to fix what content aware kind of managed to do. That is truly exceptional. Okay, and then finally I have this photo, which is um, from a documentary trip that I did in Malawi. And I want to expand this photo, which in fairness is not a very, it's not a very fair comparison because content aware Phil could never do this. It's, it's just not within its, within its skill set to do this um, because it's not generating new content that it's imagining. It's generating new content based on what's in here and what I want is to go beyond what's in here. But to me, that is just 
another argument as to why content aware fill is basically obsolete going forward. So let's go ahead and hit the crop tool. Let's change this to original ratio just so that we don't crop in on the photo. And I'm gonna hold option or alt and just click and drag so it makes it bigger like that. Okay, um, and I'm just gonna say expand. <laughs> we inside a car, that's cool. Well, we're inside a car in all of the options. It's, uh, well, that's a, in a rear view mirror. Okay, I mean, it's not quite what I was going for, but uh, huh, let's try it again. Let's remove expand and just generate it blankly. If you're not happy with what you get, hit generate again and it'll generate a whole new three sets of images for you. Okay, that's pretty cool. It needs some serious blending around the square, but... Uh, it's a, oh, wow. It's got a tree and everything in there. That's quite cool. I think, to be honest, this is probably my favorite one. Just need to blend that square now. So let's try that. Get our lasso back in. Let's just do a quick little circle of that area. And say blend. Okay, it's still not perfect. I can still see a line there. I can still see a bit of glitchiness happening along that tree. I wonder if adding feather to it would help. Hang on. Sorry, I'm getting lost in my own thing now. Uh, let's go ahead and modify this and just add a bit of feather to it. Uh, let's add I don't know, 30 pixels of feather. <laughs> Boom. And like that, you got yourself a Brunizer effect. It's incredible. Now, of course, there's gonna be lots of like glitches in the people and that kind of thing. Like people having six fingers or no fingers or that kind of thing, or faces turning into a full like Picasso montage. But um, that's only gonna get better as this machine learns um, <laughs> what we need. Oh, I see it's gotten rid of her foot. That's a bit of a shame. I didn't want it to get rid of her foot. Let's just hit the brush tool and just bring that back. There we go. That's her foot back in. And you can really use this beyond just modifying your own photographs. You can use this for pure creation. So I've used the generative fill to create ideas for storyboards, which I then sketch over just to make a rough sketch when I'm, when I'm putting together a storyboard without having to troll through the internet for source images that can kind of create a mood board for me. I can just generate a mood board directly here in Photoshop with generative fill. Insane. All right, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gave you a bit of a taste of what generative fill is capable of in case you haven't seen it in action before. As I say, it's, it's a learning machine, so it's gonna keep on learning the more we use it and keep on improving on its uh, on its results. And I don't think I'm ever gonna use content to wear fill again. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this and editing and camera tips and things. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.